All right, so Aaron, uh, why don't you kick us off? Tell us about this kitchen sink procedure. <laughs> so the kitchen sink is what I call these massive dynamic search procedures that let users uh, search by, uh, let's say we're looking for employees, they let them search by height or weight or last name or salary or any combination of those. So on the, uh, the first try, usually you end up with these big messy statements with a lot of conditional constructs that say things like uh, where column one is equal to param one or param one is null and column two is equal to param two or, or param two is null or you might even use the uh, shorthand coalesce so where column one is equal to coalesce at param one column one uh, and these can get uh, very messy for the optimizer mm -hmm. so I'm going to uh, grab the screen and go into a quick uh, demonstration of this all right, so this first procedure that I have on the screen, I called Kitchen Sink More Chaos. So um, it has a bunch of parameters that are coming in for just to save on screen real estate. I'm just using two, so we're just going to look at uh, first name and last name that are optional parameters here. So the procedure can say, like I was explaining before, um, where first name is equal to coalesce at first name, first name, and last name is equal to coalesce at last name, last name. What this will do is if uh, first name is null and last name is not, it will uh, basically run the second clause and ignore the first. Now that there are some complications here if that column is nullable, but for the sake of argument, let's say these are uh, non-nullable columns. And, but the where clause uh, still tells SQL Server to construct a plan of a, of a certain query shape because it doesn't know the next time you call the store procedure which of those parameters will be populated. So the whole method methodology is kind of problematic because of the way SQL Server actually caches query plans. The same query text will be used over and over, uh, which means the same plan will be reused every time. And unfortunately, not every plan shape will be efficient for every set of potential parameters. So as it stands right now, the way this, the store procedure is written, um, everyone is going to get whatever plan was selected the first time the procedure was executed based on the parameters that were supplied at that time. They may or may not be selective values. They may or may not be against columns that have supported indexes, uh, supporting indexes, sorry, and what have you. Um, all kinds of things can go wrong, and you've probably heard this being described as parameter sniffing. Now, you can avoid some of that by using option recompile, but then you're paying the cost of compilation every single time, mm. even if the same parameters uh, and even the same parameter values are used over and over again. Mm. So that seems uh, kind of wasteful. Sure. So this is this is one case, and there are, there are several places, but this is one case where I condone the use of dynamic SQL. So if we look at a, an alternative rewrite of this store procedure, we take the same optional parameters and we build up a SQL statement in dynamic SQL. So if, uh, if you look, we have uh, we declare our SQL statement, which is going to be select call from dbo.table where, and then to in order to avoid all kinds of messy conditional logic, like is this the first where clause that we're adding, I I add where one equals one. So this means uh, with or without that addition, initial where clause, we're returning everything in the table, right. and then we're allowing uh, additional past parameters to filter down that result set. Yeah, since well, one is so, al it always equals one, it's always true, it gets all rows. Right. So we can add these filters conditionally. So when first name is not null, then we add and first name is equal to at first name. And then when last name is not null, we add and last name is equal to at last name. And imagine there are 30 more parameters here. Um, it doesn't get extremely messy, but it's it's not quite as readable as a normal query. So then we use SPX Qt SQL, we populate the, uh, the query that we ended up with, the names of all of the parameters, and the values of all of the parameters. Uh, and we can do this without caring which ones are actually populated, since if they aren't referenced in the query text, they're simply dropped on the floor. Now, Kevin, you might say, but Aaron, won't this introduce an entry in the plan cache for every single combination of parameters? Aaron, won't this introduce a <laughs> copy in the plan cache for every single one of these parameters? Yes. So, and I respond, why? Well, yes, it will. Um, however, you can mitigate the majority of this impact uh, by using the optimized for ad hoc workload setting, which tells SQL Server to only store the fully combined plan for queries that are executed more than once. So in the meantime, it will only store a stub, uh, and the stub is much, much, much smaller than the actual plan. 
So you won't really be wasting any uh, space in your plan cache until one of these a version of one of these queries uh, happens more than once. Right. So this is just uh, one approach to mitigating some of that. Now, if, uh, Kevin, you would probably argue that we should have more specialized stored procedures. So um, the problem is when you have a, a set of 30 parameters, making a, a stored procedure for every single possible combination of those parameters is it's going to be a disaster. Yeah. You just have way too many combinations. Yeah. So there are a lot of cases and a lot of applications out there where they actually do need this flexibility and this uh, dynamic SQL approach is one way to uh, prevent a plan from uh, taking over the whole thing and, and saying this is the plan you're always going to get mm. uh, based on these parameters and then you know if, if atypical parameters are the ones that are sent the first time then every single invocation of this store procedure is going to end up with that bad plan. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're actually reading my mind. I was going to suggest that uh, wouldn't we want as much as we could to to write, uh, you know, a, uh, a specific set of queries that we know are the least generalized? Because the more generalized SQL Server has to deal with uh, the code, the more general and less specific your plan is. Right. I have seen situations in which, um, you know, it's the old. Um, I guess it's like a ASP approach that you know you want to reduce code um, uh, reuse as much as you can, so it doesn't have to make round trips to the server. And uh, you know, so I've seen um, developers who haven't worked with SQL databases much try to strive really hard for reuse. And so I saw one of the stored procedures that one of these fellows had written once that you know uh, a single stored procedure did all the inserts, all the updates, all the deletes um, to a given table. Plus, they had code in there for, you know, how to display it when it was uh, retrieved in a query, you know, based on joins with the table, you know, in some far distant part of this application, you know, and it'd say, you know, make it yellow on the screen, and uh, that kind of generaliz generalization seems to go way too far. Yeah, that sounds more like uh, wastefulness than reuse, yeah. because yeah, you you haven't reduced any code; you've just put it all into one place. Mm -hmm. And that, that actually makes it harder to maintain and harder to find. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because right? now you have to you have to crawl through all of this massive store procedure code that serves twenty different purposes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. So uh, now we can move on to my second topic, which I believe has a separate slide. Yeah, and, and while we do that, I want to ask you one more question. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to make a quick switch here. One of the other things I wanted to ask is a little bit about um, this concept of a plan stub. Um, can, is, is that something you're familiar with and could tell us a little bit about in terms of uh, what happens when SQL Server uses a plan stub instead of the entire plan? Uh, yeah, so it, uh, it stores a hashed version of the plan and the query text. So. Uh, well, it already it already stores a hashed version of the query text, but it stores a hashed version of the plan itself. So it, it's kind of like a fingerprint of the plan, if you will. So SQL Server is able to recognize the next time that that same hash would be produced, it finds a match for the hash instead of a match for the plan. Right, and so right. So instead of storing all that bulky XML, it actually just stores a, a binary encoded value. Um, right. And which it can then use to match. Right, right. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. And just like SQL Server will sometimes use a hash join algorithm, hashes for really big sort operations can be really efficient. Yes, yeah, they can. Well, it, it depends. So, um, you know, depending on the size of each side of the join, uh, those that can and whether they're sorted or not, that can sometimes be the most efficient way. Sure. Yeah, and not necessarily saying it's the best right. way every time, but under certain circumstances, it, it can be your best alternative. Yeah, absolutely. 